we all know and love Dragonlance. But where does it come from? Who created it? And why? Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and I'm going to attempt to explain what Dragonlance is. Though I'm drawing on information from interviews, printed histories, and trade publications, I am not Astinus, and I may accidentally overlook some information or misspeak. If you find any information lacking, or quite simply incorrect, please leave a comment below, and I'll make corrections in the description of the video. Now, let's get into it. Dragonlance has inspired readers and gamers for decades. But what is it exactly? Where did it come from? And who created it? Dragonlance is a high fantasy, or epic fantasy, advanced Dungeons & Dragons campaign setting. It was originally conceptualized by husband and wife Tracy and Laura Hickman, respectively, on a road trip to TSR Inc., you see, TSR had measurable success with Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, an evolution of the original and basic Dungeons & Dragons games, but was looking to create the next big thing. It turns out that with the help of Margaret Weiss, a writer and editor at TSR, Tracy Hickman was going to deliver them a media-smashing, fundamental shift in role-playing, which was to deliver the promise of the game system which was admittedly lacking in the modules released thus far, with both dragons and story. It was codenamed Project Overlord. Advanced Dungeons & Dragons up until then was primarily a dungeon-crawling hack-and-slash game. Sure, players assumed roles of their characters, but it was up to the individual dungeon masters to infuse story into the games. And if they were running modules, well, it was presented at a bare minimum, to say the least. In 1984, Tracy Hickman designed a marketing campaign around this new intellectual property, Dragonlance, including teaser ads in Dragon Magazine, a game module with the promise of 11 more, one for each color of dragon, a novel co-written by Margaret Weiss, which grew to over 100 in the same setting by multiple authors that would be used to introduce the campaign world to players and draw in other potential players to the system, Many-led figurines of the heroes featured in the modules and novels for use in gameplay or display, and a calendar to feature the brilliant artwork of TSR's talented artists Larry D. Elmore, Clyde Caldwell, Keith Parkinson, and Jeff Easley. The media campaign fired on all cylinders, and coupled with the amazing writing and imagery, it was easy for players to get swept up and lost in the world of Kryn. But it wasn't all about the media campaign. It brought dragons, great and terrible, to players, and even rewrote some fundamental game rules and broke conventions. Dragonlance focused on telling an epic and engaging story about the War of the Lance, a story as deep, rich, and compelling as Middle-earth's Lord of the Rings and Star Wars' Galactic Civil War. It featured ancient histories, an elaborate pantheon of deities, exciting villains, inspiring and complex heroes, engaging adventure, and sordid romance. Through it all, it told a tale of the difficulty and consequences of choices made, staying true to one's moral codes, love and friendship against a backdrop of war, as Margaret Weiss puts it. Dragonlance ended up being a promise of high adventure spanning five ages, alternate game editions, a near-endless supply of novels, source materials, and years of player excitement and fandom. So what do you think about Dragonlance? Do you have some inside knowledge to expound upon the campaign? Or did I make any mistakes you'd like to see corrected? Leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, and like this video. This channel is all about celebrating the wonderful world of the Dragonlance saga, and I hope you'll join me in the celebration. Thank you for watching. This has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember, no human in full possession of his sanity who wanted to keep a firm hold on such sanity would ever willingly associate with a Kender.